Hello, I'm Elise Keller with Rise Thrive Soar and Rise Canna Coaching. We're going to go over a topic today. It's a big one. Cannabis, THC, and estrogen positive breast cancer. So I wanted to do this video for a while, to make this video for a while now. Um, the challenge is trying to get all the information that's out there and condense it down into something that's understandable and manageable. Um, there's so much misinformation out there. So hopefully we can do that for you today. If you've ever Googled cannabis and breast cancer, THC and breast cancer, you've probably found lots and lots and lots of all kinds of opinions, um, especially when it comes to THC and estrogen positive breast cancer. So you'll hear things like, you know, you got to start with a grain of rice if you're looking at the Rick Simpson protocol, or high THC is the only way to kill cancer cells. Um, you may have heard stay away from all THC because it makes estrogen positive breast cancers grow. Um, you may have heard, okay, you can use THC, but it has to be with a ratio of three to one, so three CBD and one THC. There's all sorts of um, um, prescriptive advice out there. And some of it is based around uh, articles and studies that have been done in the past. Much of the advice that's out there is unfortunately misguided. So we're gonna talk about a few different articles today, uh, two articles in particular, as well as um, a resource that's out there for you. They're all gonna be in the description of this video. So you can, you can check that out if you wanna dive deeper. My goal today is to make this as understandable as possible so that you come away when you when you when you find yourself in those Facebook groups and you're trying to figure out what's fact, what's fiction, what's myth, what's not, um, you'll be armed with some knowledge to be able to to kind of cut through the confusion a little bit. Okay, so I have my notes with me. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, the first thing we have to do before we go into the studies is just a quick primer on the endocannabinoid system again, because you're going to need to understand a few basics when we go into the studies. So. Um, there's a whole video on the endocannabinoid system. You can check that out, but here's a quick 30 second Coles notes. So the endocannabinoid system is a bodily system responsible for maintaining homeostasis among all the other systems of the body and in the body in general. It consists of a network of neurotransmitters called endocannabinoids, as well as receptor sites. CB1 and CB2 receptors are the most well known, and those are the ones that you want to remember, especially the CB2 receptors and enzymes. Now, cannabis interacts just like your body's own endocannabinoid systems, uh, and endocannabinoids rather, and it works um, by acting on those CB1 and CB2 receptors. So keep that in mind as we go through the studies. Okay, so study number one is called THC inhibits cell cycle progression in human breast cancer cells through CB2 regulation. Okay, so what the authors of this study did is they um, wanted to understand the mechanism of action of THC on breast cancer cells. Um, so basically what they wanted to see is how THC is actually causing um, the cancer cells, the breast cancer cells to die, um, to stop proliferating. Uh, they wanted to understand how exactly that worked. And what they found was that it had to do with an interaction in the CB2 um, receptor. So the THC was interacting with the CB2 receptor and that's how they figured out, um, that's where they were getting the effectiveness from. Now they had to look a little closer because they said, okay, well that's great, but do all breast cancers express that CB2 receptor? Because it's been shown, and we'll talk about that study after, that not all cancers do necessarily express the CB2 receptor. So they dug a little deeper and they looked at, they spread it out across the different subtypes. So there's estrogen positive breast cancer, um, estrogen possession, hormone sensitive, HER2 positive or HER2 negative, as well as triple negative cancers. And they looked at all of those cancers. Um, they took a group of women and they tried to break it down um, to see the averages. And remember, this is averages, so we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. But what they found was that women with hormone sensitive, estrogen, progesterone positive, had the lowest number of CB2 receptors. Um, overexpressed in their tumors. Women with the with uh, triple negative cancer had um, an average number, a, a moderate amount of CB2 expression, and women with the HER2 positive cancer, so that's estrogen positive potentially, but also HER2 positive, um, had the most overexpression of CB2 receptors, the highest overexpression. Okay, so um, let me just make sure I'm still on track here. The other thing they did find is that the grade mattered as well. So grade one, grade two um, 
had a lower expression of CB2 receptors and the higher grade three had a higher expression of CB2 receptors. So it's important to, re to remember that this was a small sample size. I'd love to see this repeated with a larger sample size. Um, but for now, this is what we have. And it gave us some clues, at least to, um, to maybe, well, well, we'll find out more about that in the next study. But it gave us some clues. That's the first thing you need to know. Um, the other thing that's important to realize is that this is, like I said earlier, averaged. So um, what that means and why this is important for this topic is that in the estrogen um, positive but not HER2 positive subtype, that means that some of the women had an expression of CB2 receptors and some had little to no detectable CB2 receptors. And that is what brought the average down. So it's important to remember that when we get into the next study. Okay, so the next study. This one was called THC Enhances Breast Cancer Growth Through Suppression of the Anti-Tumor Response. Now this article, sometimes I think this is the one that's responsible for spreading the whole, uh, you can't have THC if you have estrogen positive cancer, stay away from it, it'll cause it to spread. You may probably have heard that. Um, so what they wanted to do is test out the hypothesis that, um, that low amounts of CB2 expression um, would at times result in um, proliferation of cancer rather than stopping it. So they did in vitro um, petri dishes and they also used mouse models and they looked at cancer cell lines that they, breast cancer cell lines that they knew didn't express the CB2 receptor. Uh, and what they found sure enough is that um, in vitro uh, the breast cancer cells did continue to uh, divide and and grow and in mouse models the mice also saw progression of their tumors. Now again this is this is cell lines that are known to have little to no CB2 expression. Okay. Um, so then they went a step further and they wanted to know if it had to do with the fact that THC could be causing um, a suppression of the helper T cells of the um, immune response the anti-tumor immune response. So they looked at the mouse um, lymph nodes and they, um, they exposed them to high doses of THC and that mouse breast cancer. And they found the same thing that the uh, immune system was in fact um, compromised. Okay, so what this is telling us is that when there is little to no CB2 expression, what can happen instead with high doses, and again, so actually not again, I didn't say this yet, but in this study, um, they use very high doses of THC, so 25 to 50 milligrams per kilo of body weight, which if you wanna do the math is a really a lot of THC. Um, but what they found was in those cases, that is exactly what happened. The immune response was lowered, and because there were no CB2 receptors for the THC to, um, to exert its anti-prolific um, effects on, the cancer instead spread because A, the THC couldn't do anything, it had nothing to interact with, and B, the THC was suppressing the immune system causing the tumors to grow, okay? So, the final thing we're gonna look at with all of those, because these studies are the kind of studies that people are referring to when they try to make the recommendations for, so absolutely THC is the only thing that kills cancer because they're gonna to refer to that first study that showed that THC does kill cancer cells when it interacts with a CB2 receptor. And then you've got this next study that says, well, hang on a second, when you have estrogen positive cancer that has a lower amount of CB2 receptors, you're gonna end up causing cancer growth if you take any THC. So. Um, these are all preclinical studies, but what really matters is what happens in humans, right? Um, so there's a nurse, her name is Nurse Kristen, and she has provided recently a wonderful resource. It's a great resource, it's gonna be in the description below. I encourage you to share this with your oncologist. But over 1,200 different patients that she's either um, questioned or observed herself, um, and she's summarized all that information into a great one pager and her observations are really very much in line with both of those studies when you look at them a little closer. So what she found is that her two positive patients had approximately 80% response with doses above 25 to 50 milligrams of THC that was found to be often helpful. 
again, remember that HER2 positive um, subtype was the type that most often overexpressed the CB2 receptors, but not always. That's important to note. Next was the triple negative. So the triple negative subtype uh, in her experience and with, with the interviews and, and research that she's done, she found that in approximately 40 to 50% of cases, higher doses, so doses above 25 to 50 milligrams of THC, were shown to provide some good effective response for breast cancer. Now in the estrogen positive, but not HER2 positive subtype, that's where they saw um, a much lower response to THC in terms of curative. If you're looking for symptom management, that's a separate issue. But in terms of curative, they saw a much um, less lower response, in fact, 10% response um, from the high doses of THC. So she was also careful to point out that lower doses, so 25 milligrams or less of THC, didn't seem to have any sort of um, negative effect on estrogen positive breast cancer. Why does all this matter? <clears throat> so you may have heard people who have gone online and they've said, well, you know what, that's all a bunch of hogwash. I had estrogen positive cancer and I used really high doses of cannabis and that's all I used and now my cancer is gone. And that's great. Um, I'm not going to discount that, but maybe they were that 10% because many patients, in fact, who are estrogen positive see the opposite. When they go beyond that 25 milligram dose of THC, they'll start to see um, they'll start to see their cancer start to grow. This could be the case for triple negative as well, and even 20% of HER2 positive patients. So this is important. We, I did another video, and you can check it out, about how to find your ideal dose of cannabis. But if you are going to choose to go above that 25 to 50 milligrams of THC um, per day, then it's really important to make sure that you're working with your healthcare provider. No matter what, you should make sure that you're telling your primary healthcare provider that you're doing this. But it's especially important if you're going to go above that dose because you're going to want to monitor for any kind of progression. If you're going to try anything like a high dose therapy, um, make sure that you get your, uh, your oncologist on board. Make sure that they're able to follow up um, via tumor markers, imaging, any of that if you're going to go to higher doses. I hope this cleared up the confusion. Um, I want to point out a couple other things that are important when looking at THC and estrogen positive cancer um, and some of the suggestions you'll get out there online. One is often cited, um, one that is often cited is that you should be looking at ratios, at higher ratios of CBD to THC. So think about that really logically for a second. Let's say we're looking at a three to one CBD to THC uh, full extract oil, that thick tarry oil. That can mean a lot of things. That can be 30 milligrams of CBD and 10 milligrams of THC, but that could also be 300 milligrams of CBD and 100 milligrams of THC. And based on what we just discussed, the articles that we talked about and um, Nurse Kristen's observations, over the last couple of years with so many different breast cancer patients in the cannabis space, um, it's really important to look beyond just ratios. It's more important to look at the actual milligrams of cannabis that you're taking. So I hope that between these three resources, the articles, we've kind of um, sliced through that a bit, as well as the resource that Nurse Kristen's provided and her observations over the next, last few years, hopefully that kind of sheds some light the bottom line is you don't need to avoid THC altogether if you have estrogen positive cancer, but if you are going to choose to try to do a higher dose regimen, it's really important to follow um, with a healthcare provider the progression or, um, um, or digression of your cancer. Um, just make sure that you have somebody on your side. It's not just going to be blasting it with a whole bunch of oil. It's not necessarily going to be the solution. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope that um, I didn't make it more complicated. If I did, absolutely, you need some more clarity. Comment below and I'll be sure to answer um, for anything that I did not cover. Okay, thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.